Welcome back once again. It's another edition of Prep Preview on CISN TV. I'm Trent Condon. As we get ready for week nine of the Iowa High School regular season, classes 5A down to 3A, the playoffs start tonight in classes 2A, 1A, A, and also the eight-player game. That's right, playoffs are here. And the final week of the regular season. It happens every single year. Just how fast it goes. Looking forward to it and looking forward to the final week and getting the playoffs started here. As we'll look later on here today at the RPI, the latest ranking system uh, put in for the big class. What that means for these final regular season games in Class 5A. We'll get into that as well here all presented to you by Fairway. But before that, let's take a look back at the week that was in Week 8 of the high school season and what a week it was. Dowling Catholic against Valley, the big rivalry here in Central Iowa, really in the state of Iowa. It's talked about every single year. And this one did not disappoint. Dowling Catholic comes roaring back in the football game to win it 31-27 the final. A touchdown by Brown late in the game. Carson Brown catches it. Valley had one more opportunity, but it was a nip-tuck game throughout. Back and forth. Big plays on both sides. Kind of got off to an inauspicious start, though, on both sides. Some turnovers, some mistakes. Just some plays you rarely see in the football game in week eight of the season, but you looked at this one. This is an all-timer. This is going to be ones that you're going to be bouncing your grandkids on your knee talking about just how great the 2021 edition of Valley Dowling was. And don't forget, we might be able to see that football game once again. Incredibly impressed by Mason Morrow, the quarterback for the Valley Tigers. He bounced back. He continues to play at an incredibly high level. Remember a year ago, Mason was playing defense for the Valley Tigers. Halfway through the season, the state deemed that Jake Rubley, their quarterback, was ineligible, who had transferred in for Colorado. He had to go from playing defense, moving over to offense. He was thrust into that quarterback spot and started to see some improvements. But the season that he has put together, the strong running game also by the Valley Tigers, a lot of great things there. But the story became Dowling Catholic. They come back in the fourth quarter to win this football game. And they did it with their fine junior quarterback, Jackson Smolik. Jackson had a collarbone injury back in week one against Southeast Polk. That one went down to the wire. Southeast Polk won it 14-7 on the walk-off by Xavier Wamka, catching the Hail Mary to win that football game. He was lost. Smolik was in that game. Broken collarbone. A lot of questions. How quickly was he going to be able to come back? He gets back for this week's game against Valley, and he played at a high level. You saw it right away. Came up firing. First play of the game, Dowling throws the football, showing that he was ready to go. And though there were some rusty moments and some rusty spots that you'd anticipate with a guy that was out seven weeks, he ended up playing at an incredibly high level. The pass that he threw to Brown that proved to be the game winner absolutely beautiful, hit him in stride, and they win it 31-27. Congratulations to Dowling Catholic. They continue to rise up the RPI rankings and putting themselves in a solid spot here now in the playoffs once again in 2021. We also had some other games on CISN TV for you last week. It was Waukee Northwest as they faced off against Ankeny. This one was all Hawks, though. The Hawks get it done 48-7. In a losing effort, though, Waukee Northwest maybe had the play of the season. A great catch in the back of the end zone. Unfortunately for Northwest, though, the Wolves' only score of the game. Ankeny off that loss of Valley, starting to flex their muscle a little bit more here as we get deeper onto the season. Ankeny, one of those teams you still got to be talking about. They're the defending champion in the big school class, and they got a great opportunity here in front of them. Our other game that we also had last week on CISN TV for you, it was Southeast Polk making their way up to Ankeny to take on the Centennial Jaguars. And once again, Southeast Polk does it with defense this week. 16-0 the final here. Really just that boa constrictor defense that they had made it difficult for Centennial to really get any kind of offense generated in that one as they win it 16-0 Southeast Polk. Starting to round into form here. Had a tight one a couple weeks ago over in Cedar Rapids against the Prairie Hawks. Nice victory for them against the Jaguars. Other scores, how about the rail splitters of Lincoln last week? 38-36, they win it against Ames. Tough spot for them. Knew they had to have a victory to give themselves a realistic shot to be in the playoffs. And the Southsiders win it 38-36. Some other scores from across central Iowa. Des Moines Roosevelt keeps their playoff hopes alive as they win it against a good Sioux City East team. 47-26, the offense played at a high level in that one. 
Urbandale keeps doing it with that defense. Sam Anderson's squad continues to play great D. 35-0 a victory against Waukee in that matchup. A couple other scores from you from around central Iowa. It was Johnston. Had a lead against undefeated Cedar Rapids Kennedy in that football game into the second half, but Kennedy comes back in the second half and wins it over the Dragons 24-10. A tumble winner over Des Moines North 36-28, the final in that one. That's a look around Class 5A, what we saw last week. Coming up next, we're going to look forward, get ready for Week 9 of the regular season. We'll get you some of the big matchups that we'll be keeping our eye on. Also, what we have for you coming up today here on CISN TV and Prep Preview, we'll take a look at the matchups and hear from the coaches of your game coming up this evening. A couple of good ones with playoff implications on the line coming up tonight here on CISN TV. In Ankeny, it'll be Des Moines Lincoln with a chance again. They will absolutely solidify themselves with a victory tonight if they can find a way to upset the Ankeny Hawks and then Des Moines Roosevelt against Valley. The other matchup we have for you on CISN TV. Playoffs right around the corner in the big school classes. They start tonight in the small classes. It all gets going here next with Conversation with the Coach brought to you by Elite Eye Care when we continue on Prep Preview here on CISN TV. We are ready. We've waited for this one for a long time. The anticipation, the excitement, the intensity. The teams are on the field looking to build on last week's success. Construction doesn't need a play-by-play -play call, but it does need a team. Like the team at Graphite Construction Group. From concept to planning to building completion, our team is with you every step of the way. We've been building all over Iowa. Schools, offices, stadiums, critical services, and more. Talk with us. Tell us your vision, and you'll see and feel the difference of having the Graphite team with you every step, brick by brick, beam by beam, and play by play. And the beam is up! Mitch, this isn't a field goal. You mean like it's a touchdown! Graphite Construction Group! Graphite Construction Group. We build it better. So, Russ, what do you do in the offseason? Mitch, we don't have an off-season. Holtz Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. At the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Niggett, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Niggett help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Niggett, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Prep preview continues here on CISN TV. Trent Cotton with you as we go to Paul Yeager. His conversation with the coach, Rick Nelson, the head man for the Ankeny Hawks. Ankeny and Des Moines Lincoln come your way tonight on CISN TV. Conversation with the coach presented by Elite Eye Care. Here on the pregame show, head coach Rick Nelson and the Ankeny Hawks. Last week, first half, uh, one of your coordinators told me one of your best halves all season. Do, do you agree? Uh, I'd say it's the best half of football that we've played since I've been here, seven years. What was the reason for that? Kids were focused, they were ready to play. Um, we had a good week of preparation. And um, I just think we just kind of gelled, you know, we got the short field. And um, Kadolf, that's, that's the best I've seen him um, run. He had to run the first quarter that was really, um, I think he made four guys miss. Seriously, so um, and our defense played well. We were, you know, they've been in every game with every team, and they lost some games, close games early in the season. Mm -hmm. Then they won four, 
So we were, we were, I think our kids were really ready to play. And if we play like that, um, we'll be a very hard football team to beat. I've been thinking about a Colin Cadolf question this week, because, knowing what he did last week. I remember as a sophomore, it was, who is this guy? And what, walk me through some of his development. Where does that come from? Well, he's always been an explosive young man. I mean, he can really jump, which um, that's how you can determine who's explosive and who isn't. Standing broad jump, he can probably come close to 11 feet, um, which is pretty elite. Um, he's got over 40 inch vertical, which is elite. And he's, he's a pretty strong kid. And he has <clears throat> pretty good balance where he can keep his shoulders square down the field and, and make some cuts. Um, that not a lot of kids can do. I mean, um, he's, just, he's just a special young man. He's, you know, knock on wood, he's, he's been a little banged up, but he's been able to play every week. So that's, we really uh, are lucky that we have him. And I believe I heard him say, uh, all credit to my offensive line. How's the line developed, progressed this year? Um, we have a good group of kids. Um, we have some kids that we're trying to bring along. We, we don't have a lot of depth. I mean, we have a lot of kids out um, we just have some kids that are still just struggling with concepts um, of what we're doing. Um, so, um, but I'm very pleased with the starting five, six young men that have played. They've, they've done exceptional. Uh, your offense uh, gets a lot of credit, but the defense really seemed to, to play well on, on Friday night. What is it about this defensive unit, uh, the ball hockey group? What do you like about them? Um, they've been pretty good. Uh, the last couple of years. Um, so I think, you know, it starts up front with the front seven. Um, you know, other than really the Valley game, um, where they, we just had a lot of mental errors and we had a lot of missed tackles that game. Um, the Centennial game, we played right into Centennial's hands or that type of offense. Anyone that runs the wing tee, if you can get them behind, they're in trouble. Well, we couldn't. So, um, you know, they just kept making first downs. And so I don't blame anything on the, you know, the defense at all. Um, I thought they played extremely well. If you can hold somebody to 21 points, we should win every game. So you're playing a wing T team tonight. What are you looking at? Uh, it's a little different than the Centennial offense, but it's a lot of the same concepts. Yeah, they have a couple real nice backs. Um, I think they're leading the state in 5A rushing. So um, against Valley, they it was I think it was 14 to 14. Uh, they just popped big runs the first. So it'll it'll take a little bit for the kids to get used to it, the speed of it. Um, once they do, I think we'll settle in nicely. Um, this is a team that doesn't throw the ball as much, but that's always sometimes when somebody doesn't do something, that's when they try to counter you. Are you concerned about that? Well, yeah, anytime you play a running team and they throw a play action pass, um, you know, you, you worry that, you know, everyone's now playing the run. And um, I don't know if you watched the App State game with Coastal Carolina, but both teams were getting play action pass uh, to death. So, and they're college kids. Our kids are high school kids. So, um, yeah, I'm sure they'll, they'll hit some play action pass. And, we just got to keep consistent and uh, try to stay ahead of the change with the, the single wing, earth wing tee. Um, you know, don't let them get second and four, because you know, then it's in their favor. Which is what you'd like to do offensively. Um, you're trying to keep them that way, get your team that way. What else do you see as keys tonight? Well, the kicking game's always keys. I mean, I, you know, we've had, uh, we fumbled a couple punts um, before. So we just got to be solid in the kicking game. And uh, I think our kids will be ready to play. I, um, we had a real good week of preparation with the kids. Um, our younger group doesn't have a game this week. I guess Lincoln doesn't have a sophomore JV team. So um, we had everybody out there practicing together and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Friday. All right, Coach uh, Rick Nelson of the Ankeny Hawks pregame show continues after this. 
For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedoctordesmoines.com. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Guys, are you looking for an excuse to watch football all weekend long? Then schedule your vasectomy with the Urology Center of Iowa. The Urology Center of Iowa offers nitrous during your vasectomy, cutting-edge technology to help you relax during your procedure. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 or online at iowauro.com. Vasectomies with the Urology Center of Iowa. And tell them you heard it on KXNO. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Com. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Back here on the pregame show, Coach OJ Sinclair, the Lincoln Rail Splitters coach, uh, playoff atmosphere tonight. Uh, what are you telling your team this week about the, 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 the opportunity that's in front of them? You know, obviously it's a big challenge. We talk about that. You know, we're not naive. Uh, we understand uh, how good of a team Aiken he is, but it's winner go home, essentially. So we haven't, it's not. It's not a secret to our football team, and we just want to play as well as we can play and, and see see how it goes, I guess. I saw an interview with a couple of your guys last night or earlier this week, and they were they just they're super uh, focused on the the task at hand. That's really as a coach, knowing going into that last game, you got to feel good when your guys understand what's happening. Yeah, I think the energy is good, and I think all year we've talked about it's about us, right? Like how good can we play? And I think our kids also know that we haven't played a good four quarters of football. So we know we have to play well. We understand, you know, we're banged up. No, but I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's a basically a playoff game for us and our kids are embracing that challenge. And they, I think they got a little chip on their shoulder a little bit. So we're going to put 11 dudes out there and see if we can, we can pull an upset. What are the 11 dudes? Uh, give me a couple of guys that uh, of these 11 on let's start offense. Uh, we, we know Josh Jenkins can uh, run the ball. Well, what's he bring to your team? Uh, he's a big playback. I mean, I think he runs hard. I think he blocks well in our system. He's been around. He's bought in. I think everybody looks at him as a leader. Um, obviously, he's a good running back as well. He can catch the ball out of the backfield when we do throw. Um, but our run game's more about, uh, you know, deception and starts with our fullback as well. You know, Deshaun Coleman, he'll be out. He'll be out uh, for this game. But uh, we'll put another fullback in and get and probably Juan Revis. Let him tote the rock a little bit. And then Aiden Lovon's our other half, and we run counters with him, and he's kind of more of like a little scat back type deal. So uh, it'll be running back by committee for sure. But that's the way your stats look. I mean, you've been running a lot of guys all year. So really, it's just it sounds like next guy in. Yeah, nothing really changes. Obviously, we know we're going to have to throw the football a little bit. I think we ran quarterback sneak nine times for 70 yards against Ames. That probably is not going to work against Ankeny. But, uh, but yeah, we'll run our offense and hopefully we can play action. Ankeny's super aggressive. You know, they'll probably run a, a 52 or a 53 and their linebackers come downhill. And like every other team, they're going to try to force us to throw and, and hopefully we can execute. 
you mentioned earlier this week, the guards pull a lot. They move a lot. Uh, talk about your offensive line strength uh, in those guards. Yeah, like I told you, I think they're starting to buy in a little bit to this system. You know, our tackles are bigger and they typically block down so our guards can get out and pull, whether it's on trap or, or buck sweep or whatever. And our guards are small. I think one of them's, you know, a buck 80 and one of them's a, a buck 95, but they get out and they'll whack you a little bit. And then our tight end, um, you know, is about a buck 70 and he just does what he's asked to do. So our O line has really come along. Uh, you know, we're not big but I think we get off the football. I think typically they understand the rules. So any front that we get, I think we know how to run our offense. And like I said earlier, we're not going to change a bunch of things going in this game. We understand the challenge, but I mean, we're not going to change who we are and just hopefully we can execute. Defensively, what do you have to do and who needs to step up for you tonight? Yeah, like we talked about earlier, the thing that scares me most about Ankeny is that they just don't have one, one way they could beat you. Obviously, Kadolf is really, really good. J.J. Cole's really good. The line's good. You know, the outside receivers, they run those dang slot fades. And uh, it's just, it's a, it's a tough deal. Uh, we need to be aggressive. You know, we need to take chances. We can't just sit back and, you know, expect things to happen. We're going to have to make plays and hopefully turn them over a little bit, hopefully block a punt. I mean, we're not going to be able to just, like, stop them. You know, we just have to hopefully get a few stops on defense and then get it back to our offense. Um the other piece that we always talk about every week is complimentary football. So our best defense is probably our offense. If we can convert and keep the football for, for a long time, that'll be, that'll be our best bet as well. Sustained drives on a cold night. Uh, that's, that's November football. That's playoff football talk there. Yeah, it feels good this morning. It's a little chilly. It feels, it feels really good. And I think our kids are excited. I think our staff's excited in our community just because we're, we're playing a relevant football game in the middle of October for the first time in a while um and again we're not naive i think we're just embracing it hopefully we have fun and the biggest thing i tell our guys we're gonna have to respond to adversity at some point ankeny's gonna hit a big play uh it could be first play whatever that is we have to be able to respond and i just hope our kids play hard and, and again just see how it goes you mentioned uh, your corners can put a hat on a guy you know let's let's discuss uh, up front then uh defensive line linebackers uh, who stands out yeah, so Juan Rivas had a big game last week. We kind of switched to a four-man front against Ames. You know, they're a big passing team, but we knew we needed to stop the run first, and Juan was in the middle at linebacker and had a heck of a game, really physical. I, I think at one point probably knocked their running back out of the game, so that was good. So him and Miles Ludwood will be in the middle. They're they're bigger for, for us, probably not big for, for Ankeny as far as inside backers, but uh, they'll be good, and, you know, we're young at defensive end spots, so hopefully those Jamal West and Robert Stonehawker uh, inside. We're without Joe Bartley, who's typically a defensive tackle for us. He's out this week, so we're, we're putting big Q Lang Lockie in there. I think he's 380 pounds. Uh, before before camp started, he was 425, if you can if you can believe that. So, yeah, I mean, we're just going to try to plug the run and be aggressive on the outside and, and basically stop Kadolf in their run game and hopefully make him pass happy, I guess. Is a coach ever happy with uh, four quarters of football? I've yet to hear one say your his team's played four quarters of football. Uh, good, I like that. I, I've yet to uh, be happy after a game. It's crazy, uh, <laughs> even on the win. So, but no, I mean, I think that's what every coach wants. I, I just I see the potential. I think our team's developing or or whatever, and I just want us to see to maximize our potential, basically. And that's what we talk about. We talk about us all the time. I'm sure Coach Nelson's saying the same the same thing but you can sleep at night if you know you came out and you played your best football so that's what we're trying to do oj sinclair head coach des moines lincoln coach thank you so much have fun tonight appreciate it thank you all right the pregame show continues after this you're watching cisn.tv For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedoctordesmoines.com. 
Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore. 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Why do businesses succeed? The Better Business Bureau sees the traits of successful businesses every day. It's not easy, but it is simple. The BBB fosters trust between Iowa businesses and consumers. Visit BBB.org. Welcome back once again. Prep Preview continues on CISN TV. I'm Trent Condon here with you as we get ready for week nine of the regular season in Class 5A. Playoffs also start tonight in the small school classes. We'll get into that here just a little bit. We got two games for you coming up tonight on CISN TV. Myself and the incomparable Dar Danielson will have the call. It is the Valley Tigers welcome in the Rough Riders from Des Moines Roosevelt. Roosevelt comes in with a 5-3 and three record. The Tigers 6-2. and two. Both teams looking to get into the playoffs. Rough Riders would punch their ticket with a victory here tonight. Valley has a chance not just to host a game, but maybe get one of the top seeds if they get the victory tonight against the Rough Riders. Talked about the running game for Valley earlier in the program here today, and you got to figure that's where they're going to start. Get back to their, their basics, the bread and butter, that two-headed running back that they have. Very impressive what they've been able to do on the, on the ground and also really the development of the Valley offensive line has come a long ways from the beginning of the season to where they are today. They've given Mason Morrow a whole lot of time to be able to go out there and make plays at the quarterback position. Valley feels like offensively really trending in a positive direction. The question still remains, though, what's happening defensively? And that's where Des Moines Roosevelt, you know, they want to get this one into a track meet. They want to get up and down the field. They want to get Jack Jamison Patton, their great quarterback, out on the edges. Let him use his elite athleticism that he has. Get outside, roll the pocket out. And talking to Coach Barnett earlier here, he mentioned that he has got so much better with those throws on the run. That's something that is a big, impact, impactful play for an athletic quarterback like Patton is, and that's what they're going to try to do. Move that pocket around, get some plays up the field, and try to find that defensive backfield, see if they can find some soft spots in the Valley D. In our other matchup tonight, another team trying to fight for their playoff lives. It's the Rail Splitters from Des Moines Lincoln. They make the trek up to Ankeny to take on the Hawks. Now, uh, Coach OJ has done a great job with Lincoln getting them in this spot, giving them an opportunity to get into the playoffs. And it's kind of that old school mentality that you're thinking of when you think of Des Moines Lincoln football. It's running the football. It's a lot of different guys that'll touch it. It's motion. It's eye candy, those kind of things. And remember, go back to week two when Ankeny Centennial upset Ankeny. They did it with a great defensive effort, yes, but also big offensive plays in a very similar type of running game that you're going to see out of Des Moines Lincoln tonight. The question remains for them, can the rail splitters both offensively and defensively up front hold up against Ankeny? After Ankeny lost that game a couple of weeks ago against Valley, they have really tightened up in a big way. That defense has gone to another level, returned eight starters from a year ago in the state championship team. And they're out looking for a revenge tour here late in the season as they get ready for the playoffs. We'll have that one for you. Paul Yeager and the crew tonight as it'll be Ankeny in their matchup against Des Moines Lincoln. Catch both those games here on CISN TV. Finally mentioned also the RPI. Let's take one final look at it. Wait till tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. That's when they'll release the playoff pairings and the final RPI. You'll get a look at it here. Here's our final look at the Week 8 playoff standing. Southeast Boke, the number one team. They check in with that 7-1 record. Undefeated Cedar Rapids Kennedy down last week against Johnston came back and made it eight in a row as they come in at number two. The Valley Tigers fall to three after being number one last week after their loss to Dowling. Cedar Rapids Prairie four, Lindmar five. There's Urbandale at 7-1. They are number six. Ankeny at seven, followed by Pleasant Valley, Iowa City, City High, and the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Now up to number 10, 
in the latest rankings. Cedar Falls is number 11. Dubuque Senior is your number 12 team. Waukee Northwest at 13, followed by Des Moines Roosevelt, Des Moines Lincoln, and the final team in is Bettendorf. We talked about Ames with an opportunity to get in. Davenport North plays Bettendorf. Ankeny Centennial at number 19. They're going to need some help along with Dubuque Hempstead. And there's Johnston at number 21. Final look at the RPI numbers as we get ready for kickoff of your game. Coming up next here on CISN TV, Paul Yeager and the crew getting ready for the Hawks tonight as they welcome in Des Moines Lincoln. CISN TV, we got the call for you, and it's coming your way next. Thanks for joining us for Prep Preview on CISN TV, presented by Fairway.